just come through the um, entrance. Oh, getting rained on uh, for sandblast. I know what you're probably thinking. Oh, not sandblast again. But uh, before I bring the boat up in the heart, I'm going through all my gear. I'm getting rid of spear fishing gear, fishing gear, like mono, dyneema, lines, rigging lines, rubber, spare spear shaft, hook sinkers. I'm giving away two thirds of my big jib. Uh, a third's being kept for the Kickstarters. As soon as I've emptied the boat, um, I'll go back on the hard and, um, well, let's work out what's wrong with this boat and then um, hopefully we'll begin a new chapter. You may remember Jose here. This is four years ago in happier times. He was one of the first gooners we met. He took us for a sail in his canoe. We saw him for about three months and then he was getting married and so we prepared a bundle of pots and pans and other home stuff for him. But before I had a chance to give it to him, he disappeared. But as Providence would have it, he was here on this very day, on this island where I met him three and a half years ago. Now Jose is one of the poorest gooners around and he never owned a spear gun before. Well now he has a brand new one plus a bunch of spares. and they are all short of good sail cloth. Even my eight-year-old Genoa cut up here is far better than Jose's old soft sail, repaired with bed sheet or anything else they can find. Now to give away the water collection tarp, the gooners have to ship all their water out many miles from the mainland and their freshwater rivers. One solid downpour on this tarp would keep me going many months, and certainly for the gooners for a few weeks. So hopefully this will help a bit. Oh good, that's all sorted. Um, I did forget though, because there's these little um, webbing eyelets on the corners of the tarps and uh, on the on the corner of the tarpaulin and also in the middle. They're going to tear eventually, so I'll, I'll um, I'm just going up here. So tomorrow I'll I'll zip round um, a couple of sewing, you know, the sail sewing needles, the really big bastards, and a whole heap of twine. So if they, re you know, if it gets damaged, they can repair it. So, but apart from that, it's good. Now. Um, English is, well they don't speak English and I don't speak Spanish, but I figure I only just set it up in the bush um, just to show how it basically operates. I think one of the guys is taking it round to his hut which is over here and he's going to drape it over the hut and then have those holes down and he's got the tubing to um, direct it to the jerry can, so should be good. What do you think of the last sale, Wilson? You happy about that? 
it's a good feeling trip this one I was in the uh, nav station and um, I found some coloring in uh, textures and I've got paper I bought that ages ago and I've forgotten to give it to some kids I gave away all the lollies and the balloons but I forgot about the, the educational stuff oops see Western bad influence gives away all the, the lollies and the bad shit first. Oh, sorry. I try, people. I'm not perfect. Ask my ex-wife. No, on second thoughts, don't. That's an eight-part series there. Well, and the Christmas special. And you good people out there will be screaming, Not the smoker, Plucky. There goes half your bloody content. And yes, you're right, good people. I suppose I am committed now to building my boat. Yes, people, it's the end of an era. I'm giving away the smoker. There'll be other times, there'll be other pieces of metal I can put together and make another. Ah, uh, they were very happy. They didn't know what it was at first. They're looking at me like, what are you, what are you doing? What is this? And I explained to them, Fuego, fire, and I put some coconut stuff on the bottom and then pescado, and then they got it. I try not to film the goon. There's a couple of people I have because I know them or I know of them. Yeah, because they think they, um, they still think that the film robs them of their soul. And when you look at social media nowadays, people, I think they're right. Anyway, well, it's starting to rain. I'm leaving. It's going to be a little, little bit squally of like maybe 20 knots up too, but it should be fine. Let's do it. Hopefully this wind will keep uh, up and we'll be in Linton Bay in about, I don't know, eight to 10 hours. Bloody good. And then comes a lot of work. I mean, there's been a lot of work as it is. Basically it's what, two months of full-time editing just to get ahead so I've got some breathing space to uh, get up the factory, set up the factory, get all the gear, aluminium. Also spend a couple of weeks going around to all the other Mumby builds and getting a little bit of, um, you know, just seeing what they're doing and just getting an idea because I know I'll get the plans and I'll just be going, oh, where do I start? So that'll just be good. That'll knock off the, the hard edge at the start. Well, we had a few little squalls this morning and it was a bit stronger, it was like 12 knots, now it's about 10. Um, so I was hoping for a bit of a sporty run, you know, maybe weaving through some of the bigger ones and uh, riding some of the smaller ones. But I think we're pretty well missed it. It looks like that it's going to stay on these conditions, so let's see what happens. Of course, the odd storm dumping down there will help suck in, so we'll get a bit of wind. That's why I think we've got a little bit more wind now. Because before it was like about six to eight. Anyway, he's hoping. What do you think, Wilson? Oh, you're happy. That's lovely, Wilson. Top stuff. I'm not going to ask your wife. Easy sailing. I mean, look at that. One tack. It was heading us about three hours ago, so we're heading into the coast. But now we're just on it. We're at uh, probably about 45 degrees to wind, maybe 42, and we're right on track. So we'll probably get in just as the sun's going down. It's six miles and we're doing five and a half knots. So, it's pretty good. Tomorrow is a very big day. Uh, I've got a bit of a headache at the moment. Let's hope I can get over that. And I can do a lot of work. Lots and lots and lots of work, people. But there was no work to be had. Well, the work to get the boat out in the hard and start digging away and investigating because Panama Marina was full. And then when I checked Linton Bay Marina, where they're sort of quite close to each other, they're full. It's unheard of. 
And then I, I went, surely not Panamarina. Maybe they've made a mistake. Surely they'll be able to squeeze me in. And when I went there, I found all the people that I met at San Andreas who I convinced to come to Panamarina instead of going to Bocas del Toro. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so basically more videos and just cleaning up the boat still. So I'm eight days behind when suddenly Linton Bay gets a spot and then I finally get to go up on the hard. So I'm tapping out the hull here for all those that want to listen to the whole thing. I've got it all on film, both head perspective and on the ground perspective, but it's a bit boring, so I cut it short. Uh, so I'm tapping the hull. I've got no special hammer. I've just got just an ordinary hammer. You're supposed to have some special plastic hammer, but this is good enough. And I'm listening for crispness. So when I hit, it's a nice, sharp crack. If it goes to a dull thud, well, then we've got the problems, either delamination or something else. So I checked out the whole hull and there is no problem at all on the outside. Then I started thinking. Now, I've been thinking about this for, what, three or four months now since I had the problem. And Well, what do they say when you start thinking too much? You overthink things? Anyway, anyway. But So, hull out of hull is crisp, but then... We've got to think about what happened to the lightning. The lightning, I'm pretty sure, came into the foam core and in the aluminium. In fact, when I say pretty sure, I'm 100% sure because I know it arced out the propeller shaft tube. So basically where the aluminium frame got close to the water or that tube or was connected and then it was close to the water and it you know, vaporised the water and caused it to blow out there. And also at the cockpit drain hole. So we, ha we know it sort of was in the frame. So what I was thinking then, if it was inside the frame and you had residual moisture there, and that's a huge amount of amps, like 50 or 100,000 amps, well, that could have shocked the outer skin off the foam, or it could have shocked the inner skin off the foam. Now, I don't even know if this has been done before, because it's an unusual construction of boat, but the way I saw it is you could possibly have DLAM on the inside. Now, remember... A laminated, uh, when you have a foam core structure, it's very strong, provided you've got the inner skin and the foam and the outer skin all glued together in one unit. That's really strong. As soon as you start separating them, well, there's the problem. So, outside the hull was good. So then I went and I ripped up all the floorboards, that was a mission, and I got to, I reckon, about 80% of the hull, and I tapped out the inside of the hull too, and it was sweet as well. So, we've got no real problem. Um, well, no real problem with delamination, but we do have water in the hull at the back. We know that because the, we know that from before and we can see from the leaking of in this video too. This is where it was leaking before and you can see the salt mark. See the, the crystal trail? So there's a little tiny defect in this skin and I guess with the heat it's forcing the salt water out. But having water in the foam core, look, it's not ideal, but it doesn't mean that the boat is going to sink or it's going to be structurally unsound. I was talking to this old guy here and he's saying, well, practically every foam core boat you see out there is going to have water in the foam core because people botch up the through hole fittings and, you know, they make little accidents against, you know, concrete docks and it just eventually you'll get water in the foam core. So, look, it's not such a big deal. Even on long reef, I had in the aft starboard quarter, I had water in the hull. I remember because I, um, I was drilling on the inside and water started getting, gushing in. I thought, what the hell is this? This shouldn't be right. And what happened was professional uh, boat builders put in the Dyna plate for the HF radio, which is this um, sintered copper or brass plate. And uh, when they drilled the holes through, they pre-drilled large and then they filled it with just pure epoxy resin without any additive which is quite brittle so when they tightened the bolts it actually broke or shattered a couple of those and then that leaked into the hull so there you go people but you know it doesn't mean that boats unsound sunny and beautiful one moment hear that and here it comes
Mate, it's a scorching hot day today, but we're soon to lose the sun. The, the hull's completely dry, and what I was hoping, like feeling this, this is hot. That's warm, so this has had the sun on it, what, about an hour ago, and um, this is less warm. Oh no, that's still warm. Um, so what I'm hoping is the water in the core is expanding under the heat because it's warm and any little splits should start to weep. But as you can see, it's completely dry. But it wasn't. When I looked at the rudder post, it was weeping. There must be a hole or split there. So off comes the rudder. Now this looks like a hefty crack between the rudder post tube and the outer skin, but it actually isn't. This is the crack we are seeing. It really is a gap that is meant to be there. It is where the stainless steel tube in blue stops before reaching the outer skin. But this tube is sealed into place with the skin. The trouble is, at the red circle, we have had another blowout where the lightning has earthed with the water. So what I am going to do is drill out this hole, fill it with epoxy paste and then glass over all in one hit so it is a chemical bond from the plug right out to the fiberglass. See the water coming out? Meet Soshka, we have dinner together and sometimes dance. Don't try this at home people, I am trained in the dodgy arts. This is what happens when you don't have a Dremel tool, you make do sanding away all the dirt and crustacea and exposing clean fiberglass. But the tool didn't last long, but I made another. I'm going to Allen key the hell out of that join. Now that I've sanded it, it's gone to like a paste and it's gone in the crack. So I'll dig it all out with this and then I'll dry it up and... Yeah, suck on this. After Alan keying it up, I found the small hole and then drilled it out. Dry it out, and then we'll seal it up. Cleanliness is next to godliness, people, but only in a cheap dictionary. This is epoxy with microballs, plus I have some straight clean epoxy for the glassing immediately after. It's a little tricky, you have to be adept with your finger and holes to be fully satisfied. And you have to be good with fiberglassing the job too. Clean away the excess filler, you really only want the filler in the hole. The fiberglass should be as near to the older fiberglass as possible. Having a layer of filler will only weaken it. The filler has yet to set, but I immediately wet out the area where the fiberglass is going to go. Place in a nice section of double bias glass and gently mould it in. Thoroughly wet the glass out. Carefully place the peel ply inside, gently massage around. Some people prefer using two fingers, but this is a small hole and one finger is sufficient. But you need to keep going and going until satisfied. You can also do this with the fiberglassing job here too. Got my Chinese working boots on, rough up the bottom and get rid of any tiny growths and crustacea. Foul it and then finally we are ready for the water. There is only one more chapter in the tale of freedom number one, but that will come at another time.